are you today? <sighs> okay. Elephant in the room. My hair. Uh, I finally colored my hair. I couldn't stand it anymore. I know, I know. A bunch of you said it looked good gray. I couldn't stand it. I couldn't handle it anymore. I'm just not ready. <laughs> just, I don't know. Anyway, okay. That's out of the way. Um, second thing uh, is I have a couple things to show you. I actually did a, a bit of crochet. Um, so yay, a crochet video again. <laughs> and then I have a bit of an update on what's happening. Um, I'm going to show you a couple things that I've made for the shop. And yeah, okay, let's get to it. So I, I've been in a tremendous amount of pain for quite a bit of time. Uh, I don't know what's going on. It's not getting better. It's getting worse, actually. Um, my hands are atrocious. Um, they hurt so much all the time. Uh, when I'm crocheting, the pain is unreal. It, it breaks my heart. Um, yeah, can't even go into that because I'll start to cry. <clears throat> but I'm, I'm keep, I'm still doing it. I'm trying to fight through the pain. Um, yeah, I've been trying to take, I've been putting cream on my hands. I've been putting heat on my hands. I've been using my massager and actually mas my massager is starting to hurt. So I don't know what's going on. I don't think it's the blood thinners that I'm on. I don't know. Um, but my whole body hurts. It's not just my hands. It's my, all my joints, like my, this elbow, I don't know what's going on with this elbow. It's not the joint. It's not, um, the, the bone or anything. It's, it's almost like it's the tissue. So I don't know what, what that's all about. Um, I do know that when I'm sleeping, I sleep like this and I have my hands clenched and I don't know why. Um, I don't know if that's stress. I don't know. Like, I don't know what's happening there. So <clears throat> it is what it is. But even like in certain places, even my skin hurts. Like, I don't, I don't know. I think I, <sighs> oh, my doctor is bloody useless. I got the scan done for my legs. I haven't got the results to that yet. I still have to go and get blood work done. Oh, maybe I should do that today. Um, and uh, I can't get an appointment, a phone appointment, to talk to him until the beginning of March. Yeah. So, but I want to talk to him about this pain. I want to get tested for fibromyalgia uh, and whatever else I can think of. Because, like, just weird things are happening. Like, for the longest time, I've had an extreme sensitivity to sound, which has been um, basically like the radio and TV and sometimes voices. If they're at a certain octave or a certain um, loudness, it's like distortion. Um, I think I talked to you guys about this before. <clears throat> So I have to have everything down low and I have to, like, if there's too much going on, like if George is watching TV at his loud octave that he does and his computer and his phone and all this other stuff, I can't handle it. So I have to put my headphones on um, and then listen to my computer like low. So yeah, it's, it, I don't know. There's just weird stuff going on. But anyways, um, so I, I've been trying to crochet uh, because sometimes I need a bit of a break from doing all the sublimation stuff um, for the shop. And I haven't crocheted in quite a while. So, of course, you know, I thought, well, uh, I got that box of stuff from my, my special yarn bee. And I decided that I was going to try and make a sweater for a six and up because I can't make six and down, six years old and down anymore because of my, 
um, insurance policy that I've got for my shop. I've never actually made a bigger sweater for kids. So I thought, okay, I'm going to try it. Yeah, it's been a grind. My hands just are not letting me do what I need to do. So I've got almost got it finished. I just have um, the hood to finish and that's pretty much it. Oh, and then putting the fur around the hood. Um, so I thought I'd show that to you today. Uh, and I'm also, I have a furls um, Lucette fork to make the, tass the, the tassels. I can't find it anywhere. I can't, I, it's somewhere here and I can't find it. So, <laughs> so this hoodie is kind of on hold a little bit. Okay. Let's see here. So, oh, here's the, the jacket. Oh, it's kind of like all wonky here. Um, there it is. Here's the hood. Uh, but this has to be folded, right? And then I put the string through there. But I can't do this part until I have the string because I hold the string in there as I'm putting this up so that I don't have to string it through. Um, little tip. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's, it's going to look like that when it's done. Um, and then I have to put the tassels on and then put the fur. I, mean, I, I don't know. Maybe I won't put the fur on. Yeah, maybe I won't put the fur on. Um, I'll use the fur for another project. <laughs> so, but yeah, so that's what it looks like. Um, and then the sleeves. But yeah, so this is... I love this yarn. I can't remember if it, I think it's the ombre. Or is it the print? I can't remember now. <laughs> and I don't have it with me because I used it all up. Um, and then I just used black uh, in between. <clears throat> so I think it turned out really nice. Um, yeah, I've never, never done a sweater that big. The, I don't know if you can see, oh, there we go. Uh, so for the sleeves, I did one row of half double crochet, and then the next row is the crisscross double crochet. And I did that on the hood as well, just to give it a little bit of texture. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. It was definitely a labor of love, um, just because of my hands. So, yeah, so there's that. So because I couldn't finish that, then I thought, well, what am I going to do now? And then up popped a video tutorial from Angela from My Precious Yarnery, who put out another sweater tutorial. Yay! Um, I love doing... Must be the mailman. I love doing her tutorials because... I, I love the products that she puts out. Um, her sweaters are amazing. And she always wears this one sweater. And I'm just, I, I just love it. Um, I don't think it's the, um, the chunky sweater that I'm always doing. I think it might, I don't know if it's this pattern or not. But I really love it. And I think she has a tutorial out for it. But I can't remember which one it is. So this one. Is a stitch that I've never done. <clears throat> um, it's a single crochet and half double crochet in the same stitch. Never done it before. So I thought, I'm going to do this. I'm so excited. Uh, so I, and I'm using my new hook that I just got. My new furls hook. Woo! Um, love this hook. Jennifer was right. Uh, she sent me a message saying, mm, going to love these hooks. So I was like, okay, okay. Um, 
And uh, my friend Chris, she also said I was going to love these hooks. So the thing that the one thing I'm noticing with this particular hook, I haven't tried the other one yet, the nautical one. This hook, the finish on it is a little dull. It's not as shiny. So when I put it in the yarn, it has that wood feel to it. Um, it it kind of has that sound, that wood sound to it. Uh, so I'm not liking that, but I'm hoping that's going to go away. That's why I keep doing this. <laughs> I'm hoping that's going to go away as I use it. But other than that, I love this hook. So, okay. So I am using for this Karen Big Cake. And the color, of course, I don't have my glasses. Oh, wow. That's really small. My eyesight is getting so bad, you guys. It's like, it's ridiculous. Uh... Holy crap, I can't read that. Peach Party, I think. Uh, can you guys... No, no, no. Anyway. This, I loved this. this. The minute I saw this, I loved it. And these are not my colors at all. But I'm thinking it might be. <laughs> it's a little bit darker than that. It's about like that. Um, But... I, my color palette is changing. I don't know what's happening with me. <laughs> uh, and then oh, I'm also using the Craft Smart. You can't get this anymore. Now it's loops and threads something. Um, so I'm using up the rest of my Craft Smart. I got a couple, couple of these before they ch transitioned into loops and threads. So, yeah, so I, this is what it, oops, this is what it looks like, and it's twisted, there we go, <coughs> okay, so the tutorial goes this way, right, and this goes over your shoulder, so you're doing half of the front and half of the back at the same time. I love the way that way she did that because it's so much easier. Um, you get the whole sweater done way faster than if you're doing three pieces. So that's how mine's turning out. So I'm basically doing two rows of each to give it that look. Uh, <clears throat> and it's all the tutorials all done like mine. Um, like all of my tutorials is basically done by measurement not necessarily by stitch count, right? So I noticed there's a few people that were asking about how you measure and stuff. And she, she just did an update on her um, tutorial because she forgot to put the clip in, on, <coughs> excuse me, the clip on how you do your measurements and everything. But basically all you're doing is measuring from one shoulder to the other in the back um, to get your full size. And you measure from your shoulder to your collarbone on one side to get how many, like how many stitches this way or how many rows this way, right? And then you're doing a piece in the back after you do, like, after you've done this, say this is the full length of what I need it. Then you're going to go up halfway and then you're going to start going down and up and down and up for half of this, not the whole, the whole thing for the amount of space that you need between one, one collarbone to the next, basically, um, which is probably about four inches, four or five inches or whatever. So you're only going to be doing half of that. And then you do, once you get that done, then you're going to do a chain that goes down for however many stitches this is here. And then you keep going and doing the rest of the, the sweater. <clears throat> it's not hard once you figure it out. Um, but she explains all of that in her video. Uh, and I'm sure that if you have any issues, then you can message her and she will walk you through it. So, but yeah, so this I'm really enjoying. Um, can't wait for it to be done. And then I can have another sweater in my shop. 
Um, I did finish my sweater. It's been a long time since I start. Sorry. <laughs> um, that must be the mail. <laughs> um, it's been a long time since I did that sweater and all I had to do was put the buttons on it and I'll tell you I procrastinated the crap out of that. I finished the sweater when I had my other shop open. Oh, hold on. Holy Hannah, what is wrong with dogs and mailmen? I don't get it. Anyway, so this is another one of um, Angela's. This is my favorite one of Angela's tutorials. I've done quite a few of her sweaters. Um, but this next one, I don't know. This next one's going to be... It's going to be a hard, uh, I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, so I'm sure you saw this. It's, uh, if you've been with me for a little bit, um, I did the tassels and the hood. And I put a little fur around the hood. And then <clears throat> I forgot to put the buttonholes in this. So I got a friend of mine to sew these on for me, these little things. I didn't like the buttons that came with these. I got these from Amazon. Um, I didn't really like the buttons because I thought they were a little bit too small. So I bought new ones. And these are the toggles. These are, I think they're ceramic. I could be wrong, they could be resin but they feel like ceramic. So ugh, I, I put all of these on and then I realized I had to take them all off because um, they, I put them this way and normally that probably would have worked, but in Sandy style, it didn't. So I had to put them kind of up, up and down a little bit so that it, it would catch, right? <clears throat> So I did it like that because when I did it, when they were like this, it was just slipping off. So I did them a little bit different. Um, <clears throat> but I just love the way that this turned out. Uh, and then I did the cuffs. So I'm finally going to get this put into the shop. I'm so excited to have this finally finished. And I just, I love the way the buttons look on this. And it was just a happy little accident because I just totally, I don't know what I was thinking. I was trying to get it done quickly and I just, I wasn't thinking. See, even trying to grab a, a mug hurts. Darn it. So anyway, Okay, let's sit back and relax. Um, little update. So today is the last day of January. So you'll probably see this tomorrow, the first day of February. Um, the leaseor of my shop said that my place was going to be painted over last weekend. <clears throat> and then the inspector was going to come in this week and that I would be able to move in tomorrow. No. Um, <laughs> I just booked off all my shifts for skip the dishes too, because I thought that we, it was go time, but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, I think I only have to wait an extra day. Um, so instead of moving in, tomorrow oh no sorry yeah tomorrow we'll be moving in on Friday <clears throat> one day I don't think it's gonna make a big difference um, we're trying to work around Georgia's schedule so this actually might work out a little bit better also my sister's Friday is a nightmare um, she's got appointments and everything so she's not gonna be able to help too much but she's going to help over the weekend which is gonna be a wonderful help I know she's itching to be a part of this. She really wants to get in there and help me out. Um, but she's also got a grandbaby to 
take care of and um you know life happens so i understand that um any help i can get from my sister is great uh i think my niece might even be coming to help out too so and then i have a friend of mine her name is terry uh she just had rotator cuff surgery a month or two ago so she's still recovering from that and but she wants to come in and help as well so it's going to be fine. Uh, <clears throat> I went to Home Depot and I, I had to buy, see these shelves here? These kind of shelves, they have the bracket, whoop, the brackets that go into the slot uh, for these metal pieces. Well, the bracket on these is very similar to the brackets that you get for slat wall except the backs of them are different. The backs go in the slat wall. Uh, so I went and ordered a whole bunch from the place that I get my stuff in Victoria. I didn't know that they ship up here. I was like, yes, please. I'll pay the $20 to have it shipped up by courier. Yes, I will. <laughs> so um, I got enough for 20 shelves, I think. Um, <clears throat> 10 they're 10 inch wide and 12 inch wide so the 10 inch wide will hold my tumblers and the 10, 12 inch wide will hold my mugs um so i t i all i had to do was buy these shelves right <laughs> i went everywhere <clears throat> they wanted 14 to 18 dollars per shelf I thought, okay, I'm screwed. What am I going to do? <clears throat> so I decided that I was going to go to Home Depot and find out how much it would cost to get a big sheet of wood cut into shelves. This wonderful guy, an older fellow, crippled up as worse than me, <laughs> helped me. And he showed me that I could get melanin, melanin, melamine, melamine board, uh, which is this stuff. And it would, it's white on the top and white underneath on the bottom. But when you cut it, you get the wood edging, right? So I bought some paint and I'm going to paint the edges of all of that. So anyways, I got two sheets of this stuff he cut one sheet up in the 10 inch wide shelves and one for the 12 inch shelves and he did the 12 inch shelves in four feet long pieces um and then the other shelves are this size and he got the maximum amount that he could out of those two shelves which it far surpasses what i needed I was thrilled and it only cost me a hundred dollars. I saved myself probably at least $200. Uh, at least it would have cost me probably 300 or so three, even $400 to get shelves um, pre-made like this. So I was over the moon and they're all sitting in my car right now. <sighs> thinking that we were going in to the shop tomorrow. <laughs> but, oh, well, anyway. Um, so that's done. Uh, so I think possibly I might be ready to go. I still have an issue with how I'm going to store my yarn. Um, I don't know. I, I got these baskets i got like 10 baskets from the dollar store that i'm kind of hoping to be able to jerry rig uh i i don't know you guys it's going to be interesting with the yarn trying to get the yarn going because the baskets that i want are down at matthews and victoria and they are expensive so yeah I think I'm probably going to have to get those as I go um, and just, I don't know. We'll figure it out when I get there. Anyway, uh, do you want to see some pictures? 
I took some pictures of the shop before it was painted and as they were building the walls. Um, and it's a dark green, like the green that I put in my other shop, that wall. It's the whole shop was that color. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll put them over here. Um, so this is what the shop looks like, looked like before. And they put a wall up between me and the other shop. Now they told me they took the slat wall off the other wall. Remember I was telling you guys that they were going to have to tear down that wall between me and the East Indian restaurant and redo it. Well, they took the slat wall down and found out that it was, it is a cement wall. And there's a big mirror on that wall. So it used to be a clothing store or something. Um, so they decided to put the slat wall back up and it's done. Um, as for the smell to the East Indian restaurant, it's not coming from that wall. It's coming from outside or something. Um, but the smell is not bad. It's not like a really strong smell and you very rarely ever smell it apparently there's one one day is it one day a month or one day a week on a monday or something well the where they will do a cook-off or something um and that's when the smell is the strongest so hopefully that won't be an issue um okay so now that you've seen what the shop looked before, this is what it looks like after, but this is one coat of paint. They're doing the second coat of paint today. Uh, and this is the result of that. Way better. Way better. Um, I am shocked at how the transformation is happening. It's going to look amazing. Uh, very bright. And, and, you know, um, inviting. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Um, so I'm pretty happy with the results so far. Uh, once you get the second coat of paint, of course, it's going to look even better. But I'm not planning on doing any painting in there. Uh, what I might do is put up some peel and stick stuff if I feel it needs that. Uh, hopefully I've finished showing all the pictures. Um, so the color scheme that I'm going to be having, don't come at me. <laughs> um, it's going to be a gothic shabby chic, but not really dark gothic. Okay. It's going to be black. Um, dusty rose gray, like light, light gray, uh, and cream. So the, the black is going to be accent colors. It's not going to be like oh, black wall, you know, it's, it's just going to be accent colors. Um, so yeah, uh, my A-frame sign, my sandwich board is being done now and it's going to be amazing. Actually, I'll put a picture right here. This is going to be my new sign. I'm so excited. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's being done. Um, hopefully I'll be able to pick that up before the weekend. Um, what else? Uh, George is just hopping. He's, he wants all the stuff out of the basement. <laughs> He's like so excited. He's just like, I'm going to get a basement again. So I'm just going to be excited to get all this yarn out of here because I've still got like this atrocious mess over here. Okay. That's not all garbage. That's all yarn. Oops. Sorry, guys. Uh, so, oops. Got you a little fart. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that's all yarn that's going to be going to the shop. Okay, uh, what are we at? We're at 30 minutes. Um, I told you I, I would show you a couple of things that I've been making for the shop. Excuse me, because you guys said that you wanted to see it. So let's do that. 
Okay, so I'm just going to show you a couple of ideas, a couple of things that I've been doing. Um, <laughs> I've had a few screw-ups for mugs and stuff. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a bin um, and call it uh, the Land of Misfit Mugs or something like that. Um, and it's mugs that are off, co the colors off on um, part of it, or uh, I've done things upside down, but I'm not going to try and sell those because that's stupid. Um, but yeah, the color's not quite there, you know, um, stuff like that. Like, oh, let's see, <clears throat> like this one. Right. And then I've got the fur, but right here, it ghosted, right? So the color here is not like that. So stuff like that, um, I'm just going to sell for like five bucks or something. Um, just to kind of get the cost of my mugs back. But, you know, it is what it is. All right. So I did a whole bunch of keychains. Hopefully I can show these to you without too much glare. <clears throat> and these will be available for sale for you guys. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to put them all on my Etsy because <sighs> there's a lot. Um, but it, what I'm going to do is once I get the shop set up, I'm going to do a scan I'm going to show you guys everything that's in there. And if you're interested, you can let me know. Okay. So, so there's the keychains I did. These are double sided. So it's the same on both sides. Right. So I've done a whole bunch of these. Um, and then there's other keychains that I'm going to be doing as well. Like, uh, I think they're long ones. And it's going to have like Vancouver Island on them, but I haven't got those in yet. So that's the kind of keychains that I've been doing. And then I've been doing the car coasters. Oops. These are neoprene car coasters. I've been having a lot of fun making these. I know Jeanette from Miss Hootie Hootin' is going to be looking at this going, I want it. Well, I've got a whole bunch of different ones, girl. <laughs> so I've made a ton of these. And then I, yesterday I just finished, I, <laughs> I had this idea for packaging. Um, you know, when you go in the liquor store and you buy a bottle of something and it's got a little bottle that hangs on there. Or there's a little gift that hangs off the bottle, free gift or whatever. Well, I found out that you can buy those little boxes, right? So I bought the boxes and see, they look like that. So that you hang that on the wine bottle and then you get a little free gift, right? Well, I made up a whole bunch of wine glass cozies. I don't have my wine glass in here, but it's basically the same as cup cozy, right? It's a neoprene cup cozy, but you put your, your wine glass through here, right? And this goes around the, the glass, right? So if you're ever out at someone's house and you want to make sure that no one takes your wine glass, you put one of these on there and then everybody knows it's your glass, right? Um, and it also keeps your wine cold or warm or whatever. <laughs> I'm not a wine drinker, so <laughs> I know that red and wine are totally different. You can cool white wine and keep red wine warm or something. I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, so I've made up a whole bunch of these. Um, they're all different. And then I, uh, I just put these, oops, just put these in here. So I'm hoping... I'm going to be able to sell these um, separately. There's two to a box. I'm going to be selling these um, separately. 
and I'm also going to be selling them in a gift pack uh, that I'm going to make up. So, yeah. So that's done. Okay, now I, I've made a whole bunch of mugs and a whole bunch of tumblers that I'm not going to get into right now. But I, can, I have this other idea that I've been seeing. There's two different ideas. I was talking to you about the purse tumblers, I think. I think I was talking to you about them. Where you put the connectors for the purse on and then you can put chain or whatever on there. Um, I haven't, I tried to do one of those and I had the wrong glue, I think. Um, so I still have to do those, but I found an, uh, a really cool idea that I was just so stoked about. I got the right glue. I got all the stuff for it. The only thing I don't have is the shoelaces. Okay. So here's the runner. And then these are the little buckle things for the shoelaces, right? So, but what I think I have to do is I have to bend the, oh, they do bend, okay. So they bend in so that when you put your shoelaces on, it looks like the shoelaces here. So I have to um, buy some shoelaces. I think what I'm gonna do is there's a type of shoelace out there that you can, I think you put magnets on them or something. Um, and it kind of, it kind of gives this idea. So, um, I'm going to look into that, but yeah. So then you just put your shoelaces through here and crisscross them. And, but yeah, I was absolutely stoked when I did this one. It's my very first one. And I actually got the seam perfect. I was like, what? Like, I, how did I do that? <laughs> so, but yes, it says Nike. I, it's like, whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm so excited to see how this is going to turn out. Now I'm debating whether or not, I've seen this on a lot of them. The logo here, what they've done is they've put rhinestones all through here. I have the rhinestones from when I did nails. I have all that downstairs. I have the UV resin. Um, I've got everything I need to do that. But for the amount of work that it's going to be, I've seen these being sold for $60. I can't possibly stomach that. I, ca I cannot sell a tumbler for $60. That wouldn't sit right with me. Regular tumblers, I'm probably going to be selling for about $28. Uh, these ones, I might go $32. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. How much would you guys pay for something like that? So, I don't know. We'll see how it is. Okay. Here's another one that I did. <laughs> Me being cheeky. It's my unicorn it says my level of sarcasm depends on your level of stupidity <laughs> so there it goes now what i'm going to do with these is i'm going to make them into purse um tumblers so i'm going to put the two prongs on this side and then you're going to have the chain or the i've got pearl chains and stuff and then down the seam is where I'm going to put the rhinestones. Give it a little glitz. So, yeah. So that's that. Um, I just printed off a bunch of different ones that I'm going to be doing. Uh, and now that I've got an extra day, I might actually be able to get them done. So we'll see. Everything happens for a reason. Okay, everybody, I think that's enough uh, for now. Um, the next video will be the move. Uh, I will be videotaping all of that. And uh, yeah. Okay, guys, I love you all. Oh, uh, one more thing. Bailey, Bailey's not here with me. Um, I want to send a huge hug 
and well wishes to my friend Heather from The Crochet Witch. I just found out last night that she lost one of her pups. Um, she just put a video out uh, about it. Her link is down below all the time. Um, and yeah, I am so sorry, girl. I am so sorry. It's hard when you, you lose a, a loved one or fur baby. And this, I don't think this was a real expected passing. So, so go give her some yarny love, please. And um, just tell her that you're thinking about her and you're praying for her and that um, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Uh, yeah, it's, it's tragic. So <clears throat> not going to talk anymore about that because I'll start to cry. <laughs> okay, you guys, I love you all. I love you all. I love you all. And I will see you guys soon. Okay. Bye.